In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the area between two curves. So let's go over the basics. Let's say we have some function, f of x, and we want to find the area under the curve from a to b. So we're looking for the area of the shaded region. The area is simply the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now, let's say if we have another function from a to b, and let's call this function g of x. The area under this curve is going to be the integral from a to b, but of g of x dx. Now what happens if we want to find the area between two curves? So let's say if we have both f of x, let me draw this better, and g of x. How can we find the area between these two curves. All we need to do is take the difference between this area and this area, and we'll get the area uh, between f and g of x. So that area is simply the integral of a to b, f of x minus g of x dx. So that's how you could find the area between the two curves. You need to take the difference between the top function and subtract it by the bottom function. And then take the definite integral of that difference and you'll get the area of that curve. Now let's say if we have another function, we'll call this function f of y. And let's say it varies from c to d along the y-axis. And we want to calculate the area from c to d between that curve and the y-axis. The area of that region is going to be the integral from c to d of f of y dy. So that function is basically x is equal to some function of y. Now, let's say if we want to find the area between two curves. So let's say we have f of y and g of y. Going from c to d. So instead of taking the top function and subtracting it by the bottom function, what we're going to do is we're going to take the integral from c to d of the function on the right, which is f of y minus the function on the left, which is g of y. And so that's how we can get the area between two curves from c to d when using y values. So remember, when dealing with f of x, it's y is equal to f of x. When dealing with f of y, it's x is equal to f of y. Now let's go ahead and work on some practice problems. Calculate the area of the region bounded by the line y equals 8 minus 2x, the x-axis, and the y-axis. Well, let's begin by drawing a picture. So y equals 8 minus 2x. Let's get the x and y intercepts, since we're dealing with a linear equation. When x is 0, this is going to be 8 minus 2 times 0, which is 8. And if we replace y with 0 and solve for x, we can see that x is going to be 8 divided by 2, which is 4. 
So we have a y-intercept of 8 and an x-intercept of 4. So we want to find the area between this line, the x-axis, and the y-axis. So one way we can do this is through the use of geometry. We know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. The base is 4, the height is 8. Half of 2 is, I mean half of 4 is 2, times 8, that's 16. So that's the area of the shaded region. But let's use calculus to get this answer as well. So we know the area between a curve and the x-axis is going to be the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And as we know, y is equal to f of x. And y is 8 minus 2x, so f of x can be replaced with 8 minus 2x. And along the x-axis, we're going to integrate it from 0 to 4. So we're going to have the integral of, or from 0 to 4, f of x, which is 8 minus 2x, and then dx. So the antiderivative of 8 is 8x, and the antiderivative of 2x to the first power is 2x squared over 2. So we can cross out the 2. So it's just 8x minus x squared. So now let's plug in 4. So it's going to be 8 times 4 minus 4 squared. And then we'll plug in 0. So it's 8 times 0 minus 0 squared. 8 times 4 is 32. 4 squared is 16. And everything on the right will be 0. And 32 minus 16 is 16. So we get the same answer. And uh, it's confirmed. So that's how you can calculate the area of the region uh, using this particular definite integral. Now we can also get the same answer in terms of y as opposed to in terms of x. So we can integrate it from c to d using this formula. So remember, x is equal to f of y. So what we need to do to get a function of y is we need to solve for x. So we have y is equal to 8 minus 2x. I'm going to move this to the left side where it's going to be positive 2x. And I'm going to move y to the right side where it's going to be negative y. And now let's divide everything by 2. So we get x is equal to 4 minus 1 half y. So therefore, we could say that f of y is equal to 4 minus 1 half y. We're going to integrate it from c to d, or 0 to 8. So the area is going to be the integral from 0 to 8 f of y, which is 4 minus 1 half y, and then dy. So the antiderivative of 4 is going to be 4y. The antiderivative of y to the first power is y to the second power over 2, evaluated from 0 to 8. So this is 4y minus 1 fourth times y squared. So let's plug in 8. We're going to have 4 times 8 minus 1 fourth times 8 squared. And then once we plug in 0 into this expression, the whole thing is going to be 0. So 4 times 8 is 32, and then 8 squared is 64, 64 times 1 fourth is 16. So this too will give us the same answer of 16 square units for the area. So regardless if we choose to find the area in terms of x or in terms of y, we're going to get the same answer. Let's work on this problem. Calculate the area of the region bounded by the line y equals x and y equals x squared. y equals x is basically a straight line that passes through the origin. 
at an angle of 45 degrees. So that's y equals x. y equals x squared is basically a parabola that opens upward but starts at the origin. So if we put those two graphs together, we're going to get something that looks like this. So here's the line y equals x, and here is y equals x squared on the right side. On the left side, it just looks like that, but we don't need to worry about it. The area of the region bounded by these two curves is right here. So that's the area that we need to calculate. What we need to do is we need to determine the points of intersection. We can see the first point is going to be at zero, but we got to find the second point. To do that, we want to set these two equal to each other. So we want to set x equal to x squared. Subtracting both sides by x, we'll get that zero is equal to x squared minus x. And then if we factor out the GCF, if we factor out x, we'll get this expression. Using the zero product property, we can see that x is equal to zero and x is also equal to 1. So those are the points of intersection. Now the top function is our f of x function, which is y equals x. The bottom function is our g of x function, which is x squared. So now we can calculate the area between the two curves using this formula. It's the definite integral from a to b of the top function f of x minus the bottom function g of x. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. f of x is x, g of x is x squared. The antiderivative of x is going to be x squared over 2. And for x squared, using the power rule, it's x to the third over 3. So let's plug in 1. This is going to be 1 squared over 2 minus 1 to the third over 3. And then if we plug in 0, this whole thing will be 0. So it's 1 half minus 1 over 3. Let's multiply 1 half by 3 over 3 and 1 over 3 by 2 over 2 to get common denominators. So this becomes 3 over 6. This becomes 2 over 6. And our final answer is 1 over 6. So this is the area between the two curves. It's 1 over 6, square units. Number 3. Calculate the area of the region bounded by the curves y equal x squared and x equal y squared. So let's graph these two functions separately. So this is y is equal to x squared. It's a parabola that opens upward. Now x equals y squared, it opens towards the right. If you take the square root of both sides, you'll get that y is equal to square root of x, plus or minus. The top part of this function is y is equal to positive root x. The bottom part is y is equal to negative square root x. Now, if we focus on quadrant one, where the two curves meet, this is y is equal to x squared, and this is x is equal to y squared. So now this here is the top function, which is f of x, which is basically that function, x is equal to y squared. But solving for y, we know that it's the square root of x is equal to y. And f of x is equal to y. And remember, f of y is equal to x. 
So be careful. Don't get those confused. So we can replace f of x with the stuff that equals y, which is the square root of x. The bottom function is y is equal to x squared. And so that's our g of x function. g of x is also equal to y, just a different type of y. So this is x squared. And our goal is to calculate the area of the shaded region. So first, we need to find the points of intersection. So let's set f of x equal to g of x. So f of x, in terms of x, is the square root of x. g of x is x squared. If we square both sides, we'll get that x is equal to x to the fourth. Now, this is true when x is 0. 0 is equal to 0 to the fourth. And this is true when x is equal to 1. 1 is equal to 1 to the fourth power. So those are the points of intersection. Now that we have that, we can calculate the area using this formula. So the area is going to be the definite integral of a to b, or 0 to 1, of the top function, which is the square root of x. But we'll write that as x to the 1 half, minus the bottom function, which is x squared. So the antiderivative of x to the 1 half, we need to add 1 to 1 half, which is 3 over 2. And then instead of dividing by 3 over 2, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal 2 over 3. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. Now let's plug in 1. So this is going to be 2 over 3 minus 1 over 3. And when we plug in 0, we'll just get 0. So the final answer is just 1 over 3. So that's the area between, it's the area of the region bounded by these two curves. So that's the final answer. Now let's move on to number four. Calculate the area of the region bounded by the curves. X is equal to one minus Y squared and X is equal to Y squared minus one. So first let's talk about how we can graph this. We know that X is equal to Y squared looks like this. If that's x equal y squared, what is x equal y squared minus 1? All we need to do is take this curve and subtract it by 1 along the x-axis. So it's going to move one unit to the left. It's going to start at x equals negative 1. So that's the shape of this graph. It shifted horizontally one unit to the left. So now that we have the graph of that function, let's focus on the graph of this function. Now, x is equal to, x equals positive y squared opens to the right. What about x equal negative y squared? What happens then? So this is going to open to the left. It's reflected about the y-axis. Now, what if we add a 1 to it? When we subtracted by 1, the graph started at negative 1. If we add 1, it's going to start at positive 1. So x equals negative y squared plus 1. We're going to move one unit to the right. So this is the same as x is equal to 1 minus y squared. So what we need to do is combine these two graphs together. So it's going to look something like this. And this is going to be the area of the region bounded by those two curves. So let's redraw that picture. So here we have y squared minus 1. And here we have 
Actually, this was 1 minus y squared. And this one is going to be y squared minus 1. So let me write that. So this is x is equal to y squared minus 1. And this other one here is x is equal to 1 minus y squared. So how can we determine the area of the region bounded by these two curves? Well, we need to find the points of intersection first. So let's set these two expressions equal to each other. And since we have x in terms of y, the points of intersection will be y values. So let's set 1 minus y squared equal to y squared minus 1. So let's add y squared to both sides. And let's add 1 to both sides. So those will cancel. We'll get 2 is equal to 2y squared. Dividing both sides by 2, we get 1 is equal to y squared. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we get 1 is equal to plus or minus 1, which should be written this way. So this is a y value of negative 1, and this is a y value of positive 1. So now that we have the y values of the points of intersection, we can calculate the area between the two curves using this formula. It's going to be the integral from c to d, which are y values, of the right function, f of y, minus the left function, g of y. So f of y is here. f of y is 1 minus y squared. We could see it here. It's the, the function on the right. g of y is the function on the left. This is g of y. It's on the left side for the region that's bounded. So g of y is y squared minus 1. So now we could use this formula. It's going to be the integral from c to d. c is negative 1. d is positive 1. And then f of y, which is 1 minus y squared, minus g of y, which is y squared minus 1, dy. So let's simplify this expression first. This is 1 minus y squared minus y squared. And then these two negative signs will become positive 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Negative y squared minus y squared is negative 2y squared. The antiderivative of 2 is 2y, and for 2y squared, we have 2y to the third over 3, evaluated from negative 1 to 1. So let's plug in 1. This is going to be 2 times 1 minus 2 times 1 to the third over 3. And then if we plug in negative 1, we'll get this. So this becomes 2 minus 2 over 3, and then negative 2 plus 2 over 3. Distributing the negative sign, we'll have plus 2 minus 2 over 3. Now let's combine like terms. 2 plus 2 is 4. Negative 2 over 3 minus 2 over 3, that's negative 4 over 3. So what we need to do now is we need to get common denominators. So 4 over 1, I'm going to multiply that by 3 over 3. So this becomes 12 over 3 minus 4 over 3, which gives me a final answer of 8 over 3. So this here is the area between the two curves. Now let's work on some more practice problems. Calculate the area of the region bounded by the line y equals x squared minus 4x 
and the x-axis. x squared we know opens like this. x squared minus 4x is going to be similar, but it's going to be shifted. So what we need to do is, to graph this, we need to find the x-intercepts and the vertex. So to find the x-intercepts, let's replace y with 0. Let's solve for x. So I'm going to factor on x. Using the zero product property, we get an x-intercept of 0 and of 4. So let's make a table. So when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 4, y is also 0. Now the vertex of a parabola is the midpoint of the x-intercepts. So it's going to be at 2. Another way you can, in which you can get the vertex is by using this equation. x is equal to negative b over 2a. Let's say if you have a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is the number in front of x squared, which is 1. b is the number in front of x, which is negative 4. So we have negative b over 2a. So this is positive 4 over 2, which gives us an x value of 2. Now we need to determine the y value. To do that, we can just plug it into this expression. So y is equal to x times x minus 4. If we plug in 2, this is 2 times 2 minus 4. So we get 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. So we have enough information. Whoops. Let's go back. So we have enough information to graph this uh, function now. So we have an x-intercept of 0 and 4. And that negative 4, we have the vertex at an x value of 2. So the graph is a problem that opens upward like this. Our goal is to calculate the area of the region bounded by that line. Well, technically, that should be a curve, not a line. So let's just replace that with the word curve and the x-axis. So how can we find the area of that shaded region? Well, we need to identify the top function and the bottom function. The top function is the x-axis. And that's basically the line y equals 0. So we could say the top function is f of x is equal to 0. The bottom function, g of x, is the curve x squared minus 4x. And we're going to integrate this from 0 to 4. So let's use this formula. It's going to be the integral from a to b of the top function f of x minus the bottom function g of x. So this is going to be the definite integral from 0 to 4. The top function is 0. The bottom function is negative, well, it's minus x squared minus 4x. So let's go ahead and distribute the negative sign. So negative times negative 4x, that's going to be positive 4x, and then minus x squared. The antiderivative of 4x is going to be 4x squared over 2. And for x squared, it's going to be x cubed over 3. So 
So this becomes 2x squared. So we have 2x squared minus x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 4. So let's plug in 4. When we plug in 0, this whole thing is going to be 0. 4 squared is 16 times 2, that's 32. 4 to the third is 64, so we have 64 over 3. Now we need to get common denominators. So let's multiply 32 over 1 by 3 over 3. Thirty-two times three is ninety-six, so we have ninety-six over three minus sixty-four over three, and ninety-six minus sixty-four is thirty-two. So the area of the shaded region is thirty-two over three. That's the answer for this problem. Number six, calculate the area of the region bounded by the equations y equal x squared minus four x and y equals six minus three x. So this equation we're familiar with already. We know the x-intercepts will be 0 and 4. And we know that the vertex will be at 2, negative 4. So this graph is going to open upward like this. So that's a rough sketch. Now, here we have a linear equation, y equals 6 minus 3x, so the y-intercept is 6. Which should be somewhere here. And to determine the x-intercept, we can replace y with 0 and solve for x. So adding 3x to both sides, we have 3x is equal to 6, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So this line is going to touch the x-axis at 2. So that's what we have. And eventually, this curve is going to meet up with this line. So our goal is to get the area of the shaded region. What well, we need to determine is the points of intersection here and here. So we need to calculate the area by taking the top function and subtracting it by the bottom function. So we want the x values of the points of intersection. So let's set these two functions equal to each other x squared minus 4x, we're going to set that equal to 6 minus 3x. So let's begin by, let's add 3x to both sides. And let's subtract both sides by 6. So on the left side, we'll have x squared, negative 4x plus 3x, that's going to be negative x, and then we have negative 6. So we could factor x squared minus x minus 6. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to the middle coefficient negative 1 are negative 3 and plus 2. So we can write this as x minus 3 times x plus 2. Solving for x, we get that x is equal to positive 3. And if you set x plus 2 equal to 0, you'll get that x is equal to negative 2. So here's the first point of intersection. This is at an x value of 3, and this is at an x value of negative 2. And the top function, that's f of x, which is 
It's this linear equation. 6 minus 3x. The bottom function, g of x, is the other one. That's x squared minus 4x. So now let's calculate the area using this formula. So it's going to be the integral from a to b, that is from negative 2 to 3, f of x, which is 6 minus 3x minus g of x, which is x squared minus 4x. So we have 6. This is negative 3x minus negative 4x, which is negative 3x plus 4x. So that's simply plus x. And then we have negative x squared. Now let's clear away a few things. The antiderivative of 6 is going to be 6x. For x is going to be x squared over 2. And for x squared, it's going to be x to the third over 3. Evaluated from negative 2 to 3. Now let's plug in 3. So we're going to have 6 times 3 plus 3 squared over 2 minus 3 to the third power over 3. And now let's plug in negative 2. Six times three is 18. Three squared is nine. Three to the third is 27 divided by three, that's nine. And then we have negative. Six times negative two is negative 12. Negative two squared is four divided by two is positive two. Negative two to the third power is negative eight. With the negative in front, that becomes positive eight, but divided by three. So here we can Combine 8, I mean 18 and negative 9. 18 minus 9 is 9. And here we have negative 12 plus 2, which is negative 10, and then plus 8 over 3. Distributing the negative sign, we have 9 plus 9 over 2, and then we have plus 10 minus 8 over 3. So first, let's combine 9 and 10. So that's just 19. And then let's focus on combining those two fractions. Let's try to get a common denominator of 6. So 19 over 1, I'm going to multiply that by 6 over 6. 9 over 2, I'm going to multiply that by 3 over 3. And 8 over 3, I'm going to multiply that by 2 over 2. Nineteen times 6 is 114. 9 times 3 is 27. 8 times 2 is 16. Twenty-seven minus sixteen is eleven, and one fourteen plus eleven is one twenty-five. So this is the final answer. This is the area of the shaded region. It's one hundred twenty-five over six. Number seven. So we want to find the area of the region bounded by these two equations. We got a linear equation and a parabolic equation. Let's begin by graphing the parabolic equation. So we have x equals y squared, which we know it's going to open towards the right, but it's going to start at negative 4 along the x-axis. So 
So it's going to look something like this. Now here we have a linear equation. x is equal to 3y minus 2. So when y is 0, x will be negative 2. So that means that the x-intercept is negative 2. Now we have a positive coefficient in front of y. It's positive 3y and not negative 3y. So we know we're going to have a linear equation that's going to increase as x increases. As y increases, x is going to increase, so it's going to go up. So we want to find the area of the shaded region. What we need to do is find the points of intersection first. So let's set 3y minus 2 equal to 2y squared minus 4. So I'm going to take these numbers and move it to the other side. So we're going to have 0 is equal to 2y squared. This will be negative 3y on the right side. And then this will be positive 2 on the right. So negative 4 plus positive 2, that's going to be negative 2. So now how can we factor this trinomial where the leading coefficient is 2? To factor it, we need to multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 4 but add to the middle coefficient, negative 3. This is going to be negative 4 and plus 1. So we're going to replace the middle term, negative 3y, with negative 4y plus 1y. And then we can factor by grouping. So we're going to take out the GCF in the first two terms, and that's 2y. And we'll be left with y minus negative 2. And we're going to take out the GCF in the last two terms, which is just going to be 1, and then times y minus 2. Now these two are the same. So we're going to factor out y minus 2, and we're left with 2y plus 1. So that's how we can factor this trinomial. If we set y minus 2 equal to 0, we'll get y is equal to positive 2. And if we set 2y plus 1 equal to 0, y is going to be negative 1 over 2. So now we have our points of intersection. And these are y values, negative 1 half and positive 2. So this is equal to c and this is equal to d, since everything is in terms of y here. So now we could use this formula to get the area. It's going to be the integral from c to d of the function on the right, which is f of y, minus the function on the left, which is g of y. So relative to the shaded region, the function on the right, which is here, that function is f of y, which is the linear equation 3y minus 2. The function on the left, that's the curve function, that's g of y, which has to be the other one, 2y squared minus 4. So the area is going to be from C to D, or from negative 1 half to 2, F of Y, which is 3Y minus 2, and then minus G of Y, which is 2Y squared minus 4, DY. So we have 3Y minus 2 minus 2Y squared, and then plus 4. So this becomes negative 2y squared plus 3y, and then combining these two, that's going to be plus 2. The antiderivative of negative 2y squared will be negative 2y to the third over 3. For 3y, it's 3y squared over 2. 
And for 2, it's 2y, evaluated from negative 1 half to 2. So now let's plug in 2. This is going to be negative 2 times 2 to the third power over 3 plus 3 times 2 squared over 2 plus 2 times 2. And then let's plug in negative 1 half. So it's negative 2 times negative 1 half to the third power over 3 plus 3 times negative 1 half squared over 2 plus 2 times minus a half. 2 to the third power is 8 times negative 2. That's negative 16 over 3. 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 3. That gives us 6. And then 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 1 half to the third power is negative 1 over 8. Negative 1 over 8 times negative 2 is positive 1 over 4. Divided by 3, that becomes positive 1 over 12. Negative 1 half squared is positive 1 fourth. Divided by 2, that's 1 over 8. Times 3, that's positive 3 over 8. And then 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. So we have negative 16 over 3. 6 plus 4 is 10. Distributing in the negative sign, we have negative 1 over 12 minus 3 over 8. And then this is plus 1. So what we need to do is we need to get a common denominator of 3, 12, and 8. The best number is 24. 24 is a multiple of 3, 12, and 8. But first, let's combine 10 and 1, which is 11. We're going to multiply this by 24 over 24. And then negative 16 over 3, we're going to multiply that by 8 over 8. Negative 1 over 12, we'll multiply that by 2 over 2. And negative 3 over 8, we're going to multiply that by 3 over 3 to get a common denominator of 24. So we have 11 times 24, which is 264. 16 times 8 is 128. 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 3 is 9. So 264 minus 128, that's 136. And negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11. 136 minus 11 is 125. So the answer is 125 over 24 square units. So that is the area of the region bounded by the two curves or the two equations.